Now that we have a good intuition on the structures and function of the nervous system, we can start discussing the anatomy of the central nervous system. A critical element that we need to establish before we actually look at CNS structures is to define the terminology that will be used to navigate across the CNS. Whether it is the brain or the spinal cord, because the central nervous system is a three-dimensional structure, it is generally analyzed through the perspective of three axes, up, down, front, back, left, and right. Obviously, up, down, and so on are not the words that are used, and the actual terminology is a bit more complex because the words at first might seem foreign. Nonetheless, let's start slowly by considering the front, back, and up, down axes. Now, generally speaking, vertebrate animals generally fall in two categories based on the way their nervous system is constructed. On one hand, there are animals like cats that have a nervous system organized in such a way that the front of their brain follows the progression of their spinal cord and the top of their brains also corresponds to the top of their spinal cord. For that reason, animals like cats have one set of axes that are consistent across their nervous system. On the other hand, there are animals like us, humans, that have brains that are tilted with respect to the front of the spinal cord. Indeed, if we consider the front direction of the spinal cord like we did for a cat, you will notice that the front of the spinal cord is not in parallel with the front of the brain, and the same goes for the top and bottom axis. As a result, an important anatomical characteristic of the central nervous system in humans is that it is divided into two distinct set of axes, one for the brain and one for the spinal cord. Here, the red arrows represent the front direction and you see that they point in different ways depending on if you consider the brain or the spinal cord. As you will see shortly, these two different sets of axes are important to consider to make sure our navigation terminology is consistent across all organizations of the nervous system. Now, since the cat has an easier nervous system to navigate around, let's start with it to establish the true navigational terminology. The front direction is known as rostral, as it means towards the nose, and the back direction is known as caudal, as it means towards the tail. In terms of up and down directions, up is known as dorsal and down is known as ventral. If you are familiar with French, you will notice that ventral is similar to the word ventre, which means belly, and as you can see, the ventral direction points towards the belly. Similarly, the word dorsal is similar to the word dos, which means the back, and as you can see, the dorsal direction does indeed point towards the back. Now, when we consider the two axes of the human CNS, this is how it would look. You will notice that at the junction of the spinal cord and the brain, the axes do a 90 degree rotation to adjust for our posture. An important point to mention is that for the axes of the brain, the names generally change, although it is common to see dorsal and ventral being used. Rostral and caudal are a bit less common. So, for up in the brain, the word superior is generally used instead of dorsal, and the word inferior is generally used instead of ventral. Instead of the rostral caudal axis, the front and back axis is often described in terms of anterior and posterior, with anterior being towards the front and posterior being towards the back. Back to our three axes, you will notice that I have not mentioned the left and right axis, and it turns out that no anatomical structure are referred to as being left and right in neuroanatomy. This is because our bodies and by association the CNS are bilateral. As you can see, the brain has two hemispheres, and if we were to cut the brain in half like this, each hemisphere would mirror the other the same way our right hand mirrors our left hand and our right eye mirrors our left eye. Accordingly, it causes the structures of the central nervous system to have a central axis called the midline, which you can consider as being the plane that divides each side. As a result, if you move away from the midline, you go in the lateral direction. Since both sides are pretty much mirror copies of the other side, the directionality between left and right doesn't really matter anymore. In summary, we get this system to navigate the CNS. This summarizes pretty well what we have discussed, but there is an important detail that remains to be mentioned, and it concerns how this system is applied to the brain and the spinal cord respectively. So, as we mentioned for the brain, up is superior, back is posterior, down is inferior, and forward is anterior. In addition, some of the nomenclature for brain structures will use the ventral and dorsal terminology, and because of their definitions of being towards the top and bottom, their axis when applied to the brain 
will go in the same direction as the superior and inferior axis. For the other axis, rostral and caudal are not often used in the brain, and especially to name structures, so these six words describe pretty well how to navigate the brain. When it comes to the spinal cord, you will see shortly that the terms do not all match with our shorthand guide on the right. From what we established, up is dorsal, back is caudal, down is ventral, and forward is rostral. In addition to that, some structures in the spinal cord use the anterior and posterior terminology, which from their definitions of being towards the front and back, as we can see here, it matches up with the dorsal and ventral axis. So, to sort of reiterate the main point that I'm trying to convey here, is that the guide you see on the right matches with the directions of the brain, but not necessarily for the spinal cord. And that is an important aspect to consider when we will discuss the anatomy of the spinal cord. As long as you keep in mind that you are navigating the brain, the guide on the right is safe to use, but otherwise for the spinal cord, it is better to refer to the one in the bottom left. Now, to make sure this anatomical system makes sense, I want to review a few quick examples to show how these anatomical axes are used in neuroanatomy. For example, we will consider the lateral surface of the brain and the medial surface. On these two surfaces, we will look at the frontal lobe here shown in red. Within this region, there is a region called the prefrontal cortex that contains multiple functional regions. Now, the divisions for the prefrontal cortex are a bit abstract, and to make them I follow this general model shown in this study that discusses the frontal lobe. Anyhow, the prefrontal cortex is divided in different regions that are named based on the navigation system we covered. On the lateral surface, the top portion is called the dorsal lateral prefrontal cortex because it is on the dorsal side and on the lateral surface. By the same logic, the region below in green is the ventral lateral prefrontal cortex and the region in blue is the lateral frontal polar cortex. On the medial surface, the top region will be called the dorsal medial prefrontal cortex, the bottom in green the ventral medial prefrontal cortex, and the last region in blue is the medial frontal polar cortex. The actual names of the regions are not so important, but I hope this example has allowed to demystify some confusions if there were any. Now, as you might have noticed, although the brain and spinal cord have some features that we can examine on their surface, there is a lot of important structures in the CNS that can only be seen through cross-sections. Due to the complex 3D structure of the brain, there are three different types of cross-sections that can be made. One from the side or lateral view, one from the top or dorsal view, and one from the front or anterior view. If the brain is cut from the side view, this is said to be the sagittal plane. A cut while viewing from the top would show the horizontal plane, and a cut at the front is called the coronal plane. These three different types of cuts provide various angles to analyze the brain and decompose the complex 3D structure in more manageable perspectives. To see all three planes on the same brain, here's how it would look. The sagittal plane cuts like this, the horizontal plane like this, and the coronal plane like this. An important application of these planes can be seen in typical MRI scans where the brain is shown under the horizontal, coronal, and sagittal planes. Hence, Understanding how these planes are obtained can definitively help make sense of what each cross-section depicts. In summary, the key aspects to understand how to properly navigate the central nervous system are the three axes for the brain and spinal cord, as well as the three planes that generally divide the brain. Thank you for watching this video. If there was anything unclear or there was a mistake somewhere in the video, make sure to let me know in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video and found it useful, you can consider leaving a like and subscribing to support the channel. On the right, you will see the informational resources that I've used to produce this video. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you in our next discussion.